justified, somebody says, when you are justified, it is just as if I never sinned. When Jesus justifies a believer, you can stand before God just as if I never committed any wrong. That's what justification is about. It is a spiritual rebirth in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Jesus and the Holy Spirit can empower each Christian to overcome. If you're not a believer, you cannot do it, I understand. I was once an unbeliever. I once was like that. Such was I, just like in the book of Corinthians. But he washed me. So the first step is to allow the only one who faced all temptations and overcame successfully to come and live in us, to come and justify us. Then, step two, once you are in the family of God, He will teach you and train you. You know, it's one thing just to be born in a family. It's another thing to actually get the DNA of your family, get the culture, get the values of your family. And that takes training and time. So as you learn the Word of God, come to church, learn how to pray, God will give you the power to overcome addictions and temptations that would have whipped you without Jesus Christ. God challenged me to challenge you. All of you who are in church, all of you who are watching by DVD, God told me specifically to challenge you to pledge to sexual purity, specifically in four areas. Don't kid yourselves. Don't make any mistake about it. Even if the world pretends that this is safe, that this is okay for you, the Bible says this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, he said, do not be deceived. Do not be misled. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites will inherit the kingdom of God. He didn't say that to threaten us. He didn't say that to make us feel bad. He said that while we have a chance, while we have time. He's saying, don't miss the kingdom of heaven. He's the one that invented pleasure. He's the one that invented family. There's going to be the highest pleasure in heaven. All of the pleasures you ever want, pure and clean, will be in heaven. Don't miss out for just momentary satisfaction on the earth. Don't miss out on heaven because the devil lied to you and said sin won't cost. That is a lie of the devil. The Bible says sin will cost your soul. Sin will destroy your life. Don't play with fire. Today, I'm going to challenge you to make this pledge that I abstain from these four things. And the Lord gave me these four. So I believe that He's touching certain hearts so that you can be pure and ready for the kind of relationship, marriage, family that God has already preordained for you. He's got a beautiful plan for you. He doesn't want you to be alone if you don't want to be alone. He's got a great partner for you all prepared. But don't sabotage His plan. Make this pledge today. If you can, by faith, I pledge to abstain from number one, pornography. I pledge to abstain from pornography. The word porno comes from the Greek word pornos. And you might be surprised that the word pornos does not mean pornography. It means a prostitute. Do you know that anyone that you see in a porno magazine or a porno website, they're a prostitute. You are fellowshipping mentally and emotionally. You're, fre you're frequenting with a prostitute. You might think, oh, I've never been to a prostitute, but anyone who watches pornos engages in prostitution, and you also prostitute your mind to the devil. That's why the word pornography, the graphics of pornos, the graphics of prostitutes, the photos of prostitutes comes from the root word pornos. I pledge to abstain from number two, fornication. Fornication, what does it mean? It simply means premarital sex. God wants you to pledge as a Christian to abstain from fornication. I pledge to abstain from number three, adultery. That is unfaithful sex. 
One of the highest pleasures in life is to develop a union with a person of the opposite sex that you have a lifelong mutual trust with. People who just play around will never understand that. There's something amazingly wonderful about that kind of relationship, but it gets broken, it gets tampered, it gets adulterated by adultery, which is simply unfaithful sex. And number four, I pledge to abstain from homosexuality. That is called uh, same gender sex or unnatural. The Bible says this is an unnatural use of the man. This is an unnatural use of the woman. And it's not safe. It is far, far from safe. 